Welcome to Taiwan Report News Brief, news and analysis from Taichung, Taiwan. All right, up today on the program, presidential campaign funding figures have been released, and there is something very revealing in the numbers. KMT Chair Johnny Chang says he'll resign if the KMT loses the Kaohsiung City Council speaker race. The control yuan rate rules in favor of nurses. Is Taiwan eyeing stronger ties with India? Taiwan calls on citizens to avoid China, Hong Kong, and Macau altogether. But up first, some headlines. Premier Su Su Tenzang on Thursday directed that the government's COVID-19 relief funds be expanded by adding an additional budget of approximately 200 billion NT. Su directed the allocation of the additional budget to help businesses affected by the pandemic and fund the procurement of disease prevention supplies and the purchase, research, and development of man vaccines. Taiwan will invest 4.2 billion NT in developing smart transportation in the next four years so that it can better serve disadvantaged people, the Ministry of Transportation and Communications said. The planned investment will be a continuation of its current 2017 to 2020 transportation improvement project and will focus on the needs of people living in remote areas as well as senior citizens. The legislature on Friday approved the appointment of 11 members of the executive U sorry the examination UN I do that every time don't I the branch of government that is responsible for administering national civil service servant exams and appointing training and protecting the rights of civil service personnel Former Education Minister Huang Rongchun has was confirmed as president of the examination UN in a 65 to 3 vote the DPP has 63 members in the legislature and lawmakers of the opposition KMT and Taiwan People's Party abstained. You, uh, you may know. Or Yo a human a human rights lawyer and a former legislator of Taiwan's ruling Democratic Progressive Party was conferred the National Order of Merit with the rank of knight by the government of France. Taiwanese travelers to all four constituent countries of the United Kingdom will no longer need to self-isolate for 14 days upon arrival beginning Friday, a spokesperson for Taiwan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs said. So that means you get Northern Ireland and Wales along with Scotland and England now. The ranking Republican in the U.S. House Foreign Affairs Committee, Michael McCall, says he believes recognizing Taiwan as a sovereign, independent country would be the harshest punishment that the U.S. could inflict on Beijing. The Texas representative has express, expressed his belief that the Chinese Communist Party ideology is destined to fail. In a press briefing on the U.S. decision to withdraw from the World Health Organization, U.S. State's Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the WHO has repeatedly shown its deficiencies by failing to fulfill its fundamental missions. One of those deficiencies is Taiwan's exclusion as an observer in the WHO's decision-making body, the, w, the World Health Assembly, he said, in response to a question by CNA on the issue. Quote, we tried to do the simple thing to get Taiwan to be able to uh, participate as an observer, and the Chinese communist influence prevented that from happening, he said. I think that's very telling. President Tsai Ing-wen's presidential campaign this year ended with a 24.13 million NT deficit, while Han Guoyu's campaign for the KMT had a 30.19 million surplus, the Control UN said in a report published yesterday. The People First Party candidate James Song also listed a deficit for election spending of about 30 million NT, the report showed. Interestingly, the report showed that the Han campaign also paid 31,500 NT for an appearance on the YouTube channel The Night Night Show or Bo and Ye Ye Show, 
which was 2.5 times in the 13,100 the Thai campaign spent to appear on the show. If you speak Chinese, I highly recommend the show. It's a hilarious show loosely based on U.S. shows like The Daily Show. A lot of fun. Miao Li Guo. Oh, that one killed me. All right. Thai and her running mate, William Lai, received $564.76 million in donations, including $338.14 million from individuals, $160.56 million from corporate donors, $6.44 million from private groups and, and foundations, and $59.56 million from anonymous donors and others. The hand campaign received four hundred and fifty six point three one million, including three hundred and seventy one point one two million from individuals, forty five point two six million from corporate donors and one point two three million from private groups and foundations and thirty two point six seven million from anonymous donors and others. Adding up the amounts for individual donors, anonymous donors, and others, the two campaigns raised roughly a similar amount. What is very striking, however, is Thai raised over 160 million NT, while Han got, only got just over 45 million from corporate and business donors. That's a sea change. That marks a really significant shift. The KMT used to be the party more trusted to handle the economy, and businesses with operations in China, of course, were much more supportive of the more China-friendly party. Now, if memory serves, in the last election, the DPP and KMT candidates raised similar amounts, I think DPP got a little bit more, indicating a shift was underway, and businesses knew which way the wind was blowing in that election. This time, the DPP candidate out outraced the KMT candidate by 3.5 times among corporate donors. Some of that can probably be accounted for by businesses betting Thai would win and may have been turned off by Han's erratic behavior. But there is also a good chance that they viewed the DPP administration as more competent at handling the economy. Even a decade ago, that would have been almost unimaginable. KMT chair Johnny Chang has said he'll resign if the KMT loses the, K the Kaohsiung City Council speaker race, not the mayoral race, city council speaker race. The position has been open since the last speaker, Xu Kunyuan, committed suicide following the hand recall. There has apparently been some infighting over this race. In the 65-seat Kaohsiung City Council, 31 seats are held by the KMT, with allies People First Party holding one seat. The DPP holds 25 seats, and allies the Taiwan Solidarity Union holds one. The New Power Party holds two seats, and there are five independents. I'd almost forgotten about the TSU, a KMT splinter party that supports Taiwan independence and looked to former President Li Donghui for inspiration. They were, some, they were once something of a force in the legislature, but it's been a while since they've held any seats there. Apparently, some of the independents in the NPP haven't declared which side they're going to support. Now, in related news, the wife of Xu Kunyun is suing seven people for slander for suggesting that her husband's suicide was because of gambling debts incurred by betting on the election. So far, the police have not re released any information suggesting that was the case. The control union on Monday censored the Ministry of Health and Welfare after an investigation found that registered nurses were being overworked. Registered nurses were also not given hazard pay, despite their work being laborious and dangerous, they ruled. This has been an ongoing problem and is one of the flaws with the national health insurance system. To keep costs low, the system controls payments. These savings, which benefit you and me, if you are in the NHI system, often come at the expense of nurses and some services. Due to the pressure of the job, the turnover is high, exacerba exacerbating the problem. If I recall correctly, the average time a nurse stays in the profession before leaving is only eight years. Taiwan may be making moves to strengthen ties with India. Career diplomat uh, Tian Zhongguang has been appointed as deputy foreign minister. He had been serving as Taiwan's representative to India since 2013. That's a long time. 
A report in Indian publish, publication, The Tribune, had this line. Quote, not only does such an arrangement convey approval for Tien's performance as Taiwan's representative to India over the past seven years, but it also suggests that the relationship with India is likely to become one of Taiwan's important diplomatic priorities in the future, said a Taiwan media analysis. Now, of course, we don't know that for sure, but making making someone with extensive knowledge of India, the second in command at the foreign ministry, is an interesting choice. With tensions with China high, there have been considerable calls recently in the Indian media for stronger ties with Taiwan. Plus, Taiwan's new southbound policy, which includes India, is trying to encourage companies to relocate out of China. India could be a good option. It has economies of scale and a huge internal market like China does. They are also very strong in software, which is very complementary to Taiwan's strengths in hardware. And that is starting to happen. According to a Reuters report, Apple just out the, today, Apple is gradually moving its production line from China to to other countries and scaling up the manufacturing process in India as part of the plans. It is report, reportedly gotten a commitment from Hanhai, aka Foxconn, to join them with a one billion U.S. dollar plant to supply Apple's plans. Speaking of avoiding China, Taiwan's top government agency in charge of China affairs on Thursday called on Taiwanese nationals to avoid traveling to China, Hong Kong and Macau, citing the increased risk of facing prosecution on allegations of violating the newly implemented Hong Kong national security law. A spokesman for the Mainland Affairs Council said the vaguely defined clauses of the law could be interpreted broadly. He said it has thus largely increased the risk of facing possible prosecution as one could break the law without intending to. Once found to have violated the law, one could be transferred to mainland China to face charges under Chinese laws, regardless of his or her nationality, he said. Now, by the way, mainland actually works here in the context of Hong Kong, but that's a diversion. All right. He also said uh, he, he also said if they are already there, they should reconsider their needs to remain in Chinese territories. Now, this is a dramatic statement, especially considering there are nearly half a million Taiwanese living and working in China. Frequently used figures like one or two million Taiwanese in China are probably wrong. And official numbers are over 400,000. But there are probably some uncounted people over there. Highly unlikely to be half a million to a million and a half uncounted, however. It is unclear how much of a deterrent this statement will be to Taiwanese, but no doubt some will think twice as a result. How, however, I think most will be taking a wait-and-see approach. It is unclear how strongly or sparingly China will be enforcing this law. For example, I already know that I am on China's radar and my work got a website blocked in China very early on when they had only just begun setting up the Great Firewall of China. So in theory, I could be arrested if I went to Hong Kong. Question is, would they? If they apply the law to every critic, there will be a huge backlash and people will stay away in droves. If they rarely apply it and only to a handful of critics they genuinely fear, there will still be a backlash, but minor critics may not feel too worried. They may even choose to not use it in Hong Kong for foreign nationals, preferring to keep the threat in reserve. Where they draw the line is something to watch closely. I'd like to thank our patrons on our new Patreon account and encourage you to join them. A lot of work goes into each show and your support is crucial for us to keep going and keep growing. Now, I strongly recommend that you hit subscribe and hit the bell if you're on YouTube or your favorite podcast. But you'll, you'll get or on Facebook. That's the fastest way to get the latest show. Sometimes it can be as, as long as 18 hours before I get to sharing it around. So do that, and of course, tune in uh, for the next show. Tomorrow I'm off, and look forward to that. This has been brought to you by the Taiwan Report. For more content like this, become our patron at report.tw.